Hey, so today we are going to be looking at brakes. Um, first things first, a bit of a disclaimer here. I am not a mechanic, so this is just the way that I do it. Use it at your own risk. If you want to do it the same way as me, then great. Um, if you don't, great. Entirely up to you. This is just how I do it. Um, what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to do the rear brake on my GSX 750F and I'm going to reverse fill it. Um, this is something that I find makes it a lot easier to bleed through afterwards. So I reverse fill with older fluid. It's not old, it's not black or knackered, it's just been used for this purpose before. And then flush it through with new fluid um, to make sure that there's no air in the back brake. Um, so yeah, I shall crack on. Okay, so this caliper has already been rebuilt, um, and you can see from the PTFE tape around the bleed nipple. I do that because I've got a pressure bleeder, um, so I can pressure bleed this out if I wanted to. Um, but for the sake of this video, it's, most people don't have a pressure bleeder, so we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way. So, we slacken off the bleed valve. Okay. And there we go. So try and make sure that it is um, not too loose because you are going to be pressurising the system sort of with one of these, a syringe and lovely bit of hose. Okay, um, I don't know what type of hose this is but I've had it for years and it's the only one I've ever used that hasn't gone hard brittle and broken. Um, it came with my pressure bleeder so maybe that's why. So we attach the hose onto the bleed nipple, making sure it is nice and tight fitted on there. Yep. See, I'm pulling that, look, it's not popping off, which is ideal. And then we need to fill this syringe with fluid. Okay. I have an old jar of what I call flushing fluid here. Um, and again, this is just to fill the system before bleeding it up. So this fluid will come out again. One trick with brake fluid, try not to disturb it too much, because I don't know if you can see that, uh, bubbles in the fluid. When bre bleeding breaks, they are your worst enemy. So what I tend to do is fill that and leave it for a couple of minutes to settle. So I'll pop that down. And let the air come out of that somewhere where I'm not going to kick it over and make a mess on the floor. Okay, next thing we need to do is to remove the cap off the reservoir. Now, a lot, on, a lot of these reservoirs you'll see have got chewed screws on, the, on them, and that's because they're actually a JIS fitting. They're a Japanese industry standard fitting, they're not a normal Phillips. So, JIS screwdriver. Something to do with the angles. I'd put a post about it on my website, but yeah, it's a, there is a difference. So we remove the cap and place it safely somewhere where it's not going to get covered in crap. The reason for this is that we are going to be forcing fluid back through the system. So I need to see how much fluid comes in here to stop it from spilling over. I'm going to put a rag over the top of that anyway, in case it comes out with enough force to squirt upwards, because I don't want it going everywhere. So we'll do that. But then I can still see just there through this edge where the fluid level is. So we'll move you back to the caliper. Okay, so I've tried to give you a bit of a wider shot there so you can see what's happening. Right. Bleed nipples open, caps off. Pick up our hose and connect to it. What I'm doing now is I'm just tapping the syringe to make the bubbles go up to the top. Okay, now what we do is very slowly and gently start to feed the fluid down into the hose and into the brakes. The idea behind this is that we fill the caliper first to push the air because the air wants to go back that way anyway. So to me it makes more sense. Getting to the end of the syringe, 
now is a bit of a problem because we don't want to introduce any more air than necessary in there. What we're going to do is pinch that hose like that. So I folded it over and pinched it. That stops any fluid from coming out. We refill the syringe. Pop it back on. Like that. And then one pinch it and then give it a, a couple of flakes. Any air that's in there should come back up. Bearing in mind we're not trying to get this perfect because um, because we're going to flush it afterwards anyway. So we'll continue to pump fluid in and we're looking for it coming up into the reservoir. It doesn't need to fill it, it only needs to be just enough in the bottom. And considering this is back brake, we, we're also filling the rear caliper and the mass cylinder as well for the back. Right, and I am now seeing fluid. Well, I've just, the syringe just fell off there and I've just chucked fluid all my hands, never mind. But we've now got fluid in the reservoir. Let me lock off the, the nut and I'll show you that. Remember, brake fluid is evil stuff. Do not get it on any paintwork. If you do, wash it off straight away because it will take the paint off. Okay, so we pop the end of that hose back in the jar. We're going to use that in a minute anyway. And let's have a look in this here reservoir. So, as you can see in the bottom of there, there's a tiny bit of fluid. That's all we need in there. Okay, so from here, we are literally just bleeding brakes as we would do normally. So we top off the reservoir, undo the bleed nipple, and straight away I can see that the bubble's moving down the hose. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for a few seconds and just let any initial bubbling get out. Because even when you reverse bleeding, it still gets air in there. But that's why I use crap fluid, so I'm not wasting good fluid. Um, the fluid that I'm putting through next is good fluid, it's brand new, so... Now, your choice of fluid is your own choice. Uh, the stuff I'm using is calmer, I believe. Okay, so I press the pedal all the way down to the bottom, tighten the knot, and I'll then off the brake pedal. Open it, pedal, lock it off again. So if I can do that so you can see it. So, 8mm spanner, and I'm... Open. Pedal press here, close. And we repeat that process a lot um, until we get no more bubbles, keeping an eye on the reservoir level and topping up as necessary. Okay, quick test for um, air in the system. Press pedal all the way down. Okay, and feel where it goes rock solid. And let go, pump it, and then press it down again and feel where it goes rock solid. If the height is different, there's usually air in the system. So there's a couple of things we can do. One is we can pin that down there um, to make all the tiny little bubbles in the fluid form together into bigger ones and then bleed the system out again. What I do is I tend to leave it for a while, a um, good half hour or so, just let it settle down and then I uh, re-pump it again and see if it's the same um, 
because a lot of the air should make its way back up. Um, not always, but I can feel straight away that that's got air in it. So what we're going to do is pump it up a bit and get that piston, the pistons working in the back because as they move, they'll move the air around um, and hopefully it'll come out through the bleed nipple once I reopen it. The other thing you can do is grab the bleed, which is basically undoing the uh, bleed nut and just leaving it open. Um, but yeah, I can see bubbles coming out straight away. Um, but doing that, you must remember to top up the brake reservoir regularly. The gravity bleeding does work, it just takes a long time. Um, and personally, I like to uh, push it through. Um, yeah, we'll come back in a little while. Okay, so we've been sat with this gravity bleeding for a little while. Um, well, I've still got a fair bit in the reservoir. What we're going to do now is continue the bleeding process again um, and get any remaining air out, hopefully. It won't be that much, but brake bleeding is a patient game. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pain in the ass. But a necessary evil. Uh, nobody wants air in the system because it might feel okay initially. You'll be riding along, you'll press the brake a couple of times, it'll be fine, and then you'll go for it a third time, and, it, and it's, there's nothing there. I've done that before, um, where I've failed to bleed properly. So it's a case of taking your time and being patient. So just to run through the process of bleeding again, open the bleed valve, press the brake, keep it held at the bottom, and close the valve again. It's important that you don't absolutely hammer down on the pedal while you're doing this because you can inadvertently damage the seals in the master cylinder. Um, I've heard horror stories, particularly with cars of flipped seals, um, where you've just pumped it too hard and the, the seals have actually flipped in, inside out inside the master cylinder. Um, I've never experienced that personally. I don't know whether there's any reality to it or not, but um, as a risk factor, yeah, let's not. So. Open the bleed valve. Okay, you can leave it open, it's not going to hurt anything. Gentle, smooth pressure all the way to the end. You'll see the bubbles moving through the tube, you can't really see them on this anyway. And then we nip it up again. Don't over tighten either, because you'll crush the end of the, the bleed nipple. In fact, I'll show you what a bleed nipple looks like because I've got some spares. Um, if you crush it, it doesn't seal properly um, and you end up with all sorts of problems. Um, again, I'll put PTFE tape around mine as well and even now I can see the slight seepage coming through. It is what it is. Let um, me get another bleeding nipple. So, I have no idea what this is off. Let's uh, see if I can get that to focus for you. Yeah. As you can see, they're domed on the end. Now, this is not one I've taken off of something else. A bike of some description somewhere. Um, but yeah, you can see it's got a point on the end. Crushing that means that this side doesn't seal into the caliper properly. Um, and then you have problems with it sealing right. Okay, so let's do some more bleeding. Another thing that might be useful for you here is to get the height of this hose up. Simply because the air will travel up. So you can actually see the air moving as you're bleeding. if you can see it but there is still air in there but what we're getting now is tiny bubbles yeah and I can feel it there's still plenty of air in there so the idea of a back flush in this is to try and make sure there's as little air as possible in the caliper um, 
but doing it from empty, you're, you're pumping away at an empty cylinder, and no, I don't like to do that. Um, so if you think you're filling from the top, yes, the fluid's going to come down and into the um, master cylinder, which is over here, you just see it at the top of the screen. Um, but then you, you're pumping away at this, you're pumping away at the pedal, and you've got basically a rubber seal in there that's just pushing against metal. You, to me, that just feels like it's going to damage the seal. Whether or not that's a reality, I, well, I don't know. I'm not a, an engineer, I'm not a mechanic. Um, I do this for fun. And apparently my dogs are barking at something. Okay, as we're just repeating the process here, I'm going to uh, stop the video for a little while now and I'll catch up with you guys once I've got most of the air out of this system. Okay, so we now have a good pedal. Tiny amount of movement, wheel is rock solid. Yeah, so the good. So, what I've got to do now is I've got to lower the level in the reservoir to what it was previously. Now, the reason for this being is, is that level is an indication of how much your pads are worn. Um, as your pads obviously uh, wear out and get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, the pistons have to come out more, so the level in your reservoir will drop. Um, this is the best way to check for pad wear. You can get down, you can have a look, but you know, it's uh, ultimately, as that starts to get to the low point, that's your lot. So um, I'm just going to lower the level to what I know it was previously. These pads have still got a fair amount of life in them. Um, I believe it was about halfway, a bit, little bit under. So I'll set it to about a third of the way, um, so that I know as that drops that I need to change the pads. Um, that applies to front and rear, um, and is the best way to tell, um, as far as I can tell. Short of taking them out and measuring them. You know, that's uh, obviously a, a sure fire way. But yeah, with each pedal press, it does actually take the fluid down quite a bit. So, and there's a little window on the side of mine, so you can see it. Um, some of them are a bit more difficult to see. Uh, some of them are, are nicely on view, just around about here somewhere, near where the uh, master cylinder is. But this one actually sits under the seat, so it has got a window. Right, so what we do then is we make sure that that's nipped up tightly. To remove the hose, pinch right at the, the bleed nipple and then pull it up and then because it's in your fluid, you let it go, drains off. Now I always stick the other end in there as well because you can guarantee it will get everywhere and brake, brake fluid is absolutely nightmare, I hate the damn shit. Okay, make sure your bleed nipple's nipped up, do not over tighten it, as I said earlier you'll crush the end. Uh, find your Bleed nipple rubber cap. Mine had fallen off. Pop it back on, stop dirt and chaff and stuff getting in there, and break dust and yeah, you know, small animals, tigers, giraffes, that kind of thing. Um, put your cap back on your reservoir, which you can't see because I think it's just out of shot. Remember, JIS screwdriver, or you will chew the screws. Don't over tighten. You may have the other style, which is this, the screw-on caps, which are much easier. Uh, but yeah, we'll screw that down. Give the brake a final test. Now, remember, you've just pumped brake fluid through. The first pressure might be all the way to the bottom, as it refills the system entirely. But yeah, now it's pretty good for a back brake. Um, next job will be the front brakes. Okay, trying to get in shot on this is a bit of a pain in the arse, but right. So, GSX M50F front brakes, these are basically crap. I believe they're Takiko. Anyway, um, they've got dual sided bleed nipples, which just makes them a real pain to bleed up. So, 
much like I did on the back brake, um, I'm going to reverse bleed these um, and I'm going to fill the calipers and push it up to the master cylinder, um, which funnily enough is not in shot. Hang on. There you go, up to the master cylinder on those. Um, yeah, this is a much more involved process. On this bike, I've got a race setup, race line setup, so I've got two individual lines. Originally, on this, there would have been a single line down to um, the top of the mudguard, and then there's a, a junction that splits the T piece. Um, unfortunately, that makes it even more difficult to bleed, so um, this has been swapped to, it's got good ridge lines on it, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, that makes it a little bit better. It doesn't mean you have to start. I mean, I remember. Do I just start to the furthest one? Either way. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Start furthest from the master cylinder. Um, so we do the left side of the bike first, um, and we bleed that one up, and then we do the right side. Um, again, it's a bit of a nightmare. I mean, you can top bleed, um, fill the reservoir, and just pump it and pump it all the way down, but you're fighting the air coming back up from the calipers because the air wants to rise. So to me, it just makes more sense to do it from the bottom up, um, and then, as I did with the back, you pull the fluid back through again to, to, to get it all out. Um, yeah, it's a rather messy affair, and brakes are always a pain in the backside. But again, this is just how I do it. I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm just saying it is a way to do it, if you've got the stuff to do it. You can do it the old-fashioned way with just a tube and a jar. You know, and pump it through, and you'll be pumping for a little while, but um, yeah. Anyway, let's crack on. So, as I mentioned, you can see we've got one bleeding up on this side, and that focus isn't very good, and one on the other side. Um, now, I always do outer to inner um, just because. I don't know why I do, I just, because I've done this bike several times, it's like it's sixth restoration, I think. No, that's lies, it's second restoration after being pinched. Um, but yeah, why is it, get the focus on. It's because I've zoomed, bloody thing. Let me zoom that back out again. Yeah, there you go. Um, what I have got to do before I bleed this up is I've got to put the new pads I've got for this bike in. Um, the downside to that is that I've got to find the damn things first, so I'll find them now and I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've changed the pads, theoretically. Um, obviously pad disaster means pain in the arse. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the reservoir cap off using my GIS screwdriver, remember. Um, I'll see. I'll probably put a link to these um, on the video because they are different. They do bite differently. They're not Phillips, and whilst Phillips will work, they tend to chew. Um, but these are quite expensive uh, for what they are. But if you do a lot of this, it's worthwhile investing. So I'm going to take that off. You're not obviously not going to see that because I'm over here. So, take the lid off, there, and pop that out of the way, somewhere where it's not going to get covered in crap. And we restart, we're going to restart the uh, reverse bleeding process down here. I know that these uh, bleed valves are 8mm, and we're going to start with the left one, which is this, that one. Um, and we'll go from there. So, as before, take the bleed nipple cover off. Oh, this one's a fun one. And pop the hose on. Now, it's been sat in the fluid, so it's absolutely minging. There's a thing with brake fluid where when your hands are dirty and you get brake fluid on them, it, it kind of pushes it all into the grains in your skin, and it's an absolute nightmare to get your hands clean afterwards. I hate it. Hate brake fluid, there's no, nothing worse than it, honestly. 
Uh, what did I do with my eight mil spanner? Is there? So we can open that up now. There's no fluid in here anyway. These have been rebuilt. Um, and I was intending on putting those other pads on, but as we've now discovered, that's not going to happen. It's important to note I am, again, using flushing fluid, meaning this isn't the fluid that's going to stay in the system afterwards. I'm going to pull it all through with clean fluid. Um, this has been open to the air, and fluid is hygroscopic, meaning it will take all the moisture out of the air into it. So, bubble, bubble, who's got the bubble? We need to let that come out, so I'm just going to rotate that a bit. Not ever so important while flushing anyway. This is just to kind of start the process, if you like, because otherwise you end up pumping at the cylinder for ages, um, which is no fun. It can be done that way. Um, I just prefer this way. So tip it up and then did I open that bleeding apple? yeah I did let's put some fluid in this is a much longer process and we're leaking everywhere ok that's not good not sure why that is maybe a blockage so we might have to do it the old fashioned way. Mm, I believe I've seen better days. Bearing in mind this bike isn't 1989, it's not a new bike. Um, I don't know how long that bleeding nipple's been on. For all I know it could be the original. Unfortunately, with a rebuild kit on this, they didn't. You don't get bleed nipples. You often do. Have another try. Let's see. Does that again? No, it's p pissing out everywhere. Okay, we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. Okay, I think you should just be able to to see from there. Right. So we have an issue where I can't reverse bleed these for whatever reason. Um, Trying to put back pressure on the system is not happening. So what we're going to do is the old-fashioned way. First things first is I need to level up this reservoir, which on this bike is there. So fill the reservoir. Now how I do this is to first open the lever times slowly and steadily. I can actually hear the rubber inside so what I'm doing is I'm getting some fluid into the master cylinder before I start giving it any real grief because I don't want to damage the, the rubbers inside. They have been replaced. It's very new. And what you can see, in fact I'll bring the camera over so you can see. What you should be able to see is bubbles coming up. Now, as only one line is open, we should only be feed feeding that one line. But in my opinion, doing it this way, is t it takes a lot, lot longer to do. And I really don't like doing it this way. But needs must. But now I'm happy that there's some fluid in there. <laughs> the rubber on the uh, outer, that's not the in inside you can hear. But we just keep pumping like this for an inordinate amount of time to get the air through. Now, one bleed nipple is open. There is a hose attached to it. I am not expecting any fluid down there for quite some time. But what I can see is air coming out of that line and bubbling up in the uh, jar of brake fluid at the bottom. The one more concern at the moment is the bubbles in here. You see this for me would be a good cause for using the, um, the pressure bleeder. 
but unfortunately um, it's being a pain at the moment and it's not pressure bleeding properly. I think one of the seals has gone in it. Right, new bubbles, that's good. Yeah, basically you just put them like this on the brake lever until you start to see fluid when uh, on the top of the hose attached to the bleed nipple, which I am now getting. So, as before, we lock that off, we pull the lever back and we open. And the first few times you do that there will be a, a really serious amount of air. In fact, I'll bring the camera down so you can see that. Okay, so back to bleeding. So, right, what I'm doing first, I'm just pumping some more air out of this line. So that's where it was bubbling up here before. So what we do now, we open, we open the bleed valve. And there, hopefully you can see that air coming through there. It is a really slow process doing it this way. I mean, about brake bleeding isn't exactly quick at the best of times. But then, just return up here and pump the lever a few more times. So we can get some more bubbles going up here. Apparently not. Okay, that's good. I'll open that. See the masses of air. Just hold that until the air stops flowing. Okay, it stops moving. So we'll lock that off. Oh, let go of the lever. Open the valve. Pull the lever. The problem is, is there's so much air in this that every time you let go of the lever. And then open the valve again, the air goes straight back in. So we're going to counteract that by pulling the lever first and then opening the valve, uh, nipple, what, whatever you want to call it. Next thing I think we're probably going to end up doing, I think, is gravity bleeding this. The other thing you can do with these dual sided calipers is you can open the other bleed nipple and it sometimes allows the air to come out as the fluid runs in. Um, the, again that could be me talking tosh but it seems to work. Um, yeah I'm talking tosh most of the time anyway. But if you've got another bit of hose and connect it to the second one you can run that down into the same jar just open them both up you'll flow it faster. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find a bit more hose and I think I'm going to do that. So whilst doing the back break I mentioned that hose goes crap and hard and brittle. Well this is a prime example of it. If you look it's gone like opaque instead of clear. It was like that. Now I assume that that's a reaction with the brake fluid that's in it. Who knows. But anyway, what we're going to do is pop that onto the other bleed nipple. and drop my spanner in the process because I am a spanner. Ah, hoses everywhere. Yuck. Brake fluid everywhere. Oh, I hate brake fluid. I hate brake fluid. Okay. So, now they are both in the jar of Kenko's finest, apparently. I've had some of these jars for a very long time. So we're going to open the other block bleed nipple. Okay, so what I've done now is I've opened both. And what I'm going to do is let it gravity bleed for a little while. Can you actually see both on that shot? No, you can't. And I can't make, oh I can make my camera go lower hand. Right. And we're just going to leave it like that for a while and let gravity do its work. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Okay, so quick update. We've got a nice steady flow of fluid at both bleed nipples now. So 
what I intend on doing is I'm going to start bleeding through. Um, one thing I've noticed though is obviously the feed is this side which is closest to this nipple. So I'm actually going to bleed that side first. Because technically that bleed nipple is the furthest away from the master cylinder in terms of following the line. So I'm going to bleed that as you would do normally. And we'll see where we get there. I'll come back to you. So I'm just doing a lot of this. You see that? Lots of bubbles coming up. So this is air out of the lines and out of the calipers. I'm actually starting to get quite a lever, but I need to top that up now anyway. But yeah, I thought I'd just show you that. So I'm just going to open these bead nipples now and see how we're getting on. see that or not. But that's a good sign. We want the air out, we don't want it in there, that's for sure. Yeah, same on that one as well. We'll grab it to bleed that for a few seconds on both of those, keeping an eye on the fluid level. And we'll let some fluid go through. Camera won't focus very well, will it? Come on, camera. Focus here. No, it wants to be nice. It's my focus. So you may not see the bubbles. Just give them a tap to see if there's any lodged under the, uh, the blade nipples themselves. And then we're going to lock this one off, which is almost locked off anyway. Open that one and bleed it through. Go right back to pumping the brake lever so we can get any more out of it. Okay, so we stopped seeing bubbles on the left side. Let's have a go at the right side, or the wrong side, or whatever side. This side. Uh, and let's see what we can get out of this caliper. So as before, I'm just going to open up the bleed valves, nipples, whatever you want to call them, and let some fluid flow. One thing I noticed whilst pumping the lever is actually it was starting to get very stiff, so it's starting to become a good lever. And looking at that, there doesn't seem to be a lot of air in there at all, which is good news. Because um, then I can just simply pull some clean fluid through and we're cooking with gas. Or coal if you prefer. Or electric. But yeah, there doesn't seem to be a grand deal of air coming through from there. Which is good, because um, all I've done is pump that lever continually. And obviously any air that's in here is being pushed back up through this line. And it's coming out at the uh, reservoir, which is fine with me. But yeah, I, as I said, I don't, I don't like doing it this way. It takes forever. Um, I've had the camera off uh, for what, a good 25, 30 minutes or so of pumping fluid through that line. Um, yeah, the, I know it always feels wrong pumping the fluid through from the top down because air's got to come up. It just it feels counterintuitive to me. Um, it obviously works, but I just don't like doing it that way. Straighten the hole, see if there's any air in there. Right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to tighten this outer one. Leave the inner one open and give the lever a gentle squeeze. Yeah, there's air there, but not a lot at all. It's quite good. Did this recently on a 2005 
ZX6R. And they were Tokiko calipers on the front, and they were an absolute nightmare. And when the realization set in, is it exactly the same calipers that I've got on Magic, so not a happy bunny. <laughs> but hey ho. lever in the world but it's, it's not too bad either. Am I getting any air at the top? I am still getting a little bit of air coming from the lines. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that settle for half an hour um, with the lever pinned back and then we'll come back to it and carry on. Okay so I've had the lever pinned back for about half an hour or so. Um, and I've got a pretty good lever. There is still definitely air in the system. Um, how much? Don't know. So I'm going to pull through a fair amount more. Probably a couple of reservoirs full. Just to try and be sure that I've got it all. Trying to do this with the camera right in front of me is not easy, um, but we'll get there. Here we go. That's better. Ah, bubble. That's good. We want bubble. We do want bubble. Want bubble and squeak. I know it's a lot of bubble and squeak. But yeah, bubble. So as pumping the lever, there is no more. But there are. Let me try that again. So pumping the lever, there are no more bubbles coming up. See, I keep kicking the camera. Sorry, guys, if that's screwing with your eyes. I do need a better camera. This one's uh, battery life is about three and a half minutes, I think. Seems to be all right. It might be the other side. It's full of air still. One of them is anyway. Because pumping the lever, I'm dropping this banner. Pumping the lever, I can feel it gets better and better and better the more I pump it. So one could logically surmise that air is in there somewhere. I just think it's the other side. Right, we'll swap you around, and although the light's not as good over there. Yeah, we'll swap you around and we'll, uh, we'll have a look. Alright, so let's crack that open. What I'm doing is I'm just looking at the fluid coming out and see if there's any immediate bubbles. Which there are not. Okay, let's try the other side. Let's have a pull on that one. Yeah, that's really good. Ah, uh, there is some bubble in there, I can see it. Um, you probably won't catch it on the video, but there is air in that one. A little bit slower. Yeah, there are tiny, tiny balls in there. Right, which is an absolute pain to get rid of. And usually what I'd do is I'd just pin the lever back, leave it overnight and come back to it the following day. What that then does is it, it clumps all the little bubbles into big ones and then you can pump them through much easier. So I think that's probably your lot for now guys. But yeah, I've got a decent lever there. It would stop the bike, um, but once it's warm, that, uh, the moisture that's in the air in the lines just makes it bloody worse and before you know it you've got 
crap brakes barreling into a corner a little faster than you want to be for a, a bike with no brakes let's say that um, but yeah guys that's probably it for this one um, we successfully bled up everything works okay I am happy can you see that cheers guys see you next time